All right, guys, so Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 3 spoilers are here. I want to say thank you to Abdul and thank you to everyone for the leaks. And let's get right into it so we can talk about everything that's going on in this chapter after the long wait, because it feels like it just takes so long for these chapters to come out. I mean, I get it's a month, but lately for Boruto, it feels like we're waiting three months for it, like we're the Black Clover kids. So it's good to finally be back with Boruto. And in this chapter, we do start off pretty much right where we left off last month, right? With Boruto approaching Code with his new technique and Code deciding to take action by restricting Boruto. Boruto's movement. As Boruto just kind of like Super Saiyan 2 Teen Gohan slow walks towards Code with all of this energy, or it's really hard to tell because everything is in black and white, right? But it's probably Rasengan energy, but it just kind of looks like swirls of air going around Boruto. Because if you remember at the end of the last chapter, he activated his new Uzuhiko technique that we are going to be getting into a lot more in this chapter. So as Boruto is walking towards Code, Code opens some scratch marks on the ground behind Boruto. And as Boruto is walking towards him, he goes through the scratch marks trying to surprise Boruto. Boruto from behind, but Boruto just kind of turns around, right, and tries hitting him with this Uzuhiko technique. And as Boruto is trying to hit Code with this technique, and I say technique when it, it literally just looks like there's nothing in Boruto's hand, right? It's an empty palm that he's trying to hit Code with, but Code, sensing some danger here, grabs Boruto by the wrist to try to keep this attack from reaching him as he attacks Boruto with his other hand trying to slash his face, but Boruto looks completely unbothered by the fact that Code caught his punch, right? He's still looking forward as Code tells Boruto that if this attack does and hit him, it's all meaningless. Like, so what if you have a brand new technique? It's not going to hit me. I'm not going to allow you to just do what you want in this battle. And, ah, oh, Code, man. I'm sorry, buddy but you are. As Boruto blocks his second hit from Code by like unsheathing his sword halfway and just doing like a no look block to the side, it was really, really awesome. We see the energy that's actually been around Boruto this entire time, weirdly starting to spread around Code's arm. It's, it's really weird. Like it looks like Code makes contact with Boruto's body and the energy around his body starts to like almost spread and start spiraling around Code and it's not invisible. I mean, Code can see it or at least feel it and he knows something weird is going on, but what happens next is what makes things start getting really, really interesting. As Boruto says, I told you, it's easy and simple to kill you. As we see Code just lift his arm off of Boruto, right? Like he looks at his arm confused as his arm just leaves Boruto's body and moves to the side. And he's like, what's going on here? What's this energy around my arm? I, I wanna attack. It's here where Boruto just kind of poses and stands in front of Code and he's like, listen, I'm gonna tell you one more time, Code. This is your last warning. If you can't lead me to the Ten Tails, then you'll die here. And Code's like, don't make me laugh, Boruto. If you can do it, then do it. And I, I, I purposely make Code sound like a brat because I mean, he's a scrub. Code is just getting washed this entire time here as Boruto is just standing in front of him. And he's like, look, I, I'm done with this. You are not as important as the thing that you are in control of, right? So take me to that. I don't want to even deal with you anymore. And this obviously really frustrates Code as Code kind of lunges forward towards Boruto, who's more or less just standing there, right? But as Code takes a swing towards towards Boruto, he just completely whiffs the attack. And we see more of this energy surrounding the arm that Code used to attack, but he's still so confused. What's going on here? Like imagine in his head, he's just so confused. We see Code turn his back and look at Boruto, who's just standing there and literally hasn't moved. Boruto even has his back completely turned to Code, just unthreatened as he just stands there, almost looking at us, the reader, like, yeah, I'm raw. And Code goes for another attack like, surely, surely this guy can't just be invincible. And what do you think happens? I'll tell you. Code misses his attack again, as it looks like Boruto is just there. Like, it almost reminds me of when Sukuna was attacking Gojo in the first episode of JJK, and Gojo was just, like, teleporting around him and making everything miss and embarrassing him. Boruto could be doing Code so much dirtier than he actually is in this chapter right now, but Code just looks like a, a buffoon. He's flailing around on the battlefield, swinging and missing every attack on Boruto. And here's where I get really, really impressed, right? Because, sure, Code is attacking Boruto with killing intent, and we know that Code isn't supposed to be a pushover, in this form, Boruto is just that strong, but in his head, he thinks Boruto is just somehow mysteriously dodging the technique. But what happens next makes me think it's not that simple because as Code is looking at Boruto, like literally staring at Boruto, confused at what's going on here, while he's looking, Boruto appears behind him and Code has to like adjust himself and turn around almost like, 
wait what and the way that this happens on page like as we just go from one page to the next it, it's just literally so seamless like it looks like boruto is just moving so fast code couldn't even perceive his movements like imagine looking at somebody in front of you and they're just instantly behind you and you never saw any movements right like in that case they might as well be teleporting so this kind of leads me again to this idea it's not really a theory or anything because i don't necessarily think that boruto is actually teleporting around but he's just gotten so much faster and so much stronger that they're using code to kind of like show us the level that boruto is at at this point and it's fairly high like Code is getting embarrassed. He looks like a Genin out there. So this time, not giving Code any time to react after giving Code that final warning, Boruto lands his hand right in Code's stomach and pushes in as hard as he can, as it seems like he finally hits him with his new technique, Rasengan Uzuhiko. And things do seem pretty dramatic at first with a lot of air or a lot of like rotational energy filling the area around Boruto, like really starting to actually storm up around Boruto in a really interesting way, as all that energy then gets transferred into Boruto's palm and starts spiraling sending code flying into the air but something is really really weird here right like when you see boruto using a new rasengan after the time skip and everything what we're used to seeing in naruto is like maybe a bigger rasengan or a rasengan of like a different property right but at the end of the day it's still gonna do crazy damage to the opponent right in this situation we see a rasengan that visibly doesn't do any damage to code at all in fact in the chapter it seems like when code is blown away in the air he actually like stabilizes himself for a second and then lands on his two feet and he just kind of looks confused like oh okay i mean you hit me pretty hard in the stomach you saw me flying a bit but th that's it I okay but it isn't until code starts standing up that he realizes oh no oh no Oh no, something actually is very, what is this? So what's wrong with me? As Boruto finally starts to explain this new technique, telling Code that he just imbued him or he just gave him the chakra equivalent of the planet's rotation. So with the Rasengan being a technique that has always been about rotation, right? This seems like a really interesting and new and different interpretation of the spin of the Rasengan because it seems here like what Boruto actually did to Code is either make it so that Code's body itself is always spinning at some point or always moving or at the very least, all of Code's vision is constantly spinning in a circle because we saw that Code is standing before Boruto and we just see this big kind of like whirl of energy between him and Boruto, but it doesn't seem like Boruto was attacking or anything. Literally, he just turns his head to look over at Code and Code himself falls to the ground, which luckily he did because at that moment, Kawaki comes in with an attack trying to stop the fight between both of them happening in his village. And it's not just Kawaki that shows up because Ino Shikacho also show up as well as Himawari, who is seeing Boruto for the first time here. And Boruto even looks at her and takes notice of her during this scene. But there's too much going on for the two of them to have any sort of proper conversation or him to really worry about her all that much. It just seems like she's doing well, which, you know, that's kind of a positive, right? You have to assume at least that Boruto is very happy to see his sister doing okay. And now in this scenario where you have Kawaki here in front of Boruto and everyone else, we see that Code actually tries to make some claw marks on the ground so that he can escape and Kawaki closes them using his ability. But Code still manages to get away via one of his minions that he has hidden in his head in that storage space that I guess can't be closed by Jigen's ability. And he manages to completely escape away from Boruto and Kawaki, who are just now left there to look at each other with all this menacing energy and tension going on between them. And as Code escapes, Shikamaru advises everyone to focus on the rest of his army. However, Kawaki says that he wants to confront Boruto since after all, it's been three years since they've seen each other. And even though Kawaki pretty much curses at Boruto or like says negative things about Boruto, the first thing that Boruto says about Kawaki or to Kawaki at least is I'm glad to see you're doing well. And I feel like this is really underhanded from Boruto because yes, on one level, he did leave the village with like a certain outlook on Kawaki, right? And wanting to live in his shoes and wanting to understand him better but on another level i feel like boruto is like hey man thank you for having such a good like social status and like living so well in my life and not turning me into a bum because when i take my life back i'd be really sad if you were like some sort of thief or like unliked or something i'm glad that you've done a really good job at harboring all my personal relationships and putting me in a really positive place in the village so when i take my life back and
and you take the place that I'm in right now, I can enjoy all the work that you've done for me since you've been enjoying all the work that I've done for you when you stole my life. Now, as these two go back and forth a little bit, we see something else in this chapter that I'm sure a lot of people weren't expecting, but we actually did a short on this a little while ago, where under Boruto's collar, it's revealed that he actually has a very small toad on his neck, and this toad looks very similar to the ones that Kashi and Koji used as well, meaning at some point, Boruto probably went to Mount Miyoboku and trained of Kashi and Koji, which we said would be a really, really good idea since Kashi and Koji knows how to fight against Karma users, and just with the parallels between him and Boruto and Naruto and Jiraiya, I just felt like that'd be really awesome. But what we see here is Boruto actually has a very small kind of transponder frog, which is leaking information to him from its twin frog, which Boruto actually implanted on Code. So right now, Code is back in his weird dimension or wherever it is that he has the tentails, and everything that the frog sees that is implanted on Code is being telegraphed over to Naruto, as he learns that Code has actually drained almost all the chakra away from the tentails, and we even see the tentails in this kind of lesser form, laying on the ground as all these roots come out of its body and the chakra rods kind of hold it down, and it looks way more humanoid than it's ever looked before, but Code is here not feeling all that great still, right? Like we see the kind of rotational sound effect that has been following Boruto ever since he used his technique, now following Code around, with that kind of letting us know that Code is still going through the effects of Boruto's jutsu, and that's because according to the translators and everything that we've seen in this chapter, Boruto's jutsu allegedly will never end on Code. Like after he used it on Code forever, Code's vision will be spinning or his body will be partially rotating or whatever it is because it matches the rotation of the earth. And usually that's not something that we pick up on as human beings since we're on the planet and that's kind of how gravity and centrifugal force and all that stuff works. But Code is kind of experiencing the rotation of the earth as the actual speed of the planet is going around. Like we're moving at thousands of miles an hour at any given moment. And if you actually perceive that, you would be so dizzy, you'd be unable to think or move. Like it'd be the worst case of motion sickness ever. So now it seems like Boruto has just given Code endless motion sickness, and it's really starting to mess with him as he goes over to his Ten Tails dimension. However, we don't get to see all that much of that as the chapter ends, with Boruto doing a hand seal, and seeming like he's either gonna teleport over to Code, or he's gonna do something to Code from a distance. We're not really sure what's gonna be happening here. However, that's the end of the chapter, and we have to wait an entire month again to see what goes on in Boruto. So those have been the spoilers for Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 3. We're gonna go into them a little more in depth when the official chapter comes out and we get all the accurate translations and see every page. But again, thank you to Abdul. Thank you to all you guys for watching. Hopefully you check out my Boruto shorts. I do a lot of those. I do a lot of shorts on a lot of different series, but check out my other videos, check out my other content, and I'll see you guys later. It's Vocal Pineapple. Follow me on Twitter. I always forget to say that, so I'm adding it in right now, at Vocal Pineapple on Twitter, and I love you guys. I'll see ya. Peace.